Hi friends, in today's episode of Unplugged, we have picked up an IVB finding which is a unique IVB finding which may be a cause of persistent pain in some people and which has a very very important embryological basis. So for this Unplugged with me, I have Dr. Pradeep Pawar, he's going to talk about the anatomical basis. I will show you the radiological finding. Let us begin by the image and let's see if how many of you are able to identify what I'm showing to you. So I I hope you can see this is an intravenous pilogram. You can see this is the left kidney, the right kidney. So where do you think is the problem? Problem is on the right side. Let us track it. This is the right kidney, pelvic ileus system, the ureter, the mid ureter and bang. It goes like a fish hook here. This becomes a fish hook. Some people say S-shaped deformity of the mid ureter. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because the surgeon would always believe that if there is a persistent pain, they might think about the usual thing would be PUJ obstruction. While here the problem is not at the pelvic ureteric junction, the problem is at the mid ureter level. And the problem is on the right side. These, this is called as retrocaval or circumcaval ureter. And you know these people may be totally asymptomatic in the initial part of life or in the later part they might come with pain and symptoms of ureteric obstruction and with the resultant hydronephrosis. The key to understanding here is that we already talked about this, there is a male, male predominance, usual onset fourth decade and you know if there is an asymptomatic finding picked up in radiology, the symptom uh, treatment would include only observation. But if it is symptomatic, you might have to go for surgery for hydronephrosis or even nephrectomy if there is cortical atrophy. This, this, this problem that we have looked at and that what you are trying to understand, although we are calling it as retrocaval ureter or we say circumcaval ureter, where the ureter is going behind the IVC. But most of you will be surprised when I tell you today that the problem is not during ureteric development. It is a problem during inferior vena cava development that has led to this appearance and many times the anatomy books would actually call it as pre-ureteral IVC. And to see this uh, development, I will you know, now call upon Dr. Pradeep Awar to explain to us that why this has happened. Hi friends. So as we know, the three main components for the development of IVC, one is the pre-renal segment, one is the renal segment and one is the post renal segment. Three main veins contribute to the formation of this. The pre renal segment, which is caused by the white line vein, the renal segment, which is, uh, which is made by the subcardinal vein, and the post renal segment, which is done by the sacrocardinal or the posterior cardinal veins. Right? So, this, this is what is going to form the IBC. But sometimes the posterior cardinal vein would persist and that forms the renal segment of the IVC. Instead of the subcardinal vein being forming the renal segment, it is contributed by the posterior cardinal vein. So what happens is the posterior cardinal vein would now lie ventral to the ureter. Ventral to the ureter rather than lying dorsal to it, it lies ventral to the ureter and this is what is going to form a pre cable IVC. So ureter lying behind behind it okay so that's that's the reason the posterior cardinal vein persists and forms the renal segment of the IVC right leading to a post cable ureter so that's it you're clear fine you can follow us up on Dan's Delhi channel and I suppose you have liked this any comments you can put in the comment box any new videos you want us to make, you can always write it in your comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you.